Well, in case you're having a hard time telling, <laughs> it's another blowy day in Bangor. The autumn is here at last. Ah, dear. So, I might have a little look around, um, as I do. You mightn't be able to tell how blowy it is, because our microphones are quite good at masking the wind noise. <laughs> but it is blowing a hoolie here. On the plus side, however, the wind is coming from the south. And that's one of the reasons we like being in Bangor. It's in the northeast of Ireland, and therefore gets the lee of the whole island, because the wind around here is predominantly from the south or southwest. So the wind today is coming in over the town. Uh, the town's acting as a big windbreak. We're very pleased with that. But in spite of that, we're due about a week of very, very bad weather. There's all sorts of hurricanes and tropical storms coming from the Caribbean, crossing the Atlantic and coming here. So my job is to put some storm lines on the boat. But I thought I'd have a little wander around just to see what's going on. So one of my little jobs is to the water tanks and get the storm lines on. And I will need that one there. We've already got some fitted up forward, but that's fine. But we don't really have any fitted on the stern. We just have the standard octoplat that we use and it stretches quite a bit. So we're already close to the pontoon up there and I'm a bit concerned about the amount of stretch we have. So what I'm going to do is draw the boat back a bit, put the new storm line on, and then hopefully that's us set for the week. So yeah, it's windy weather and I'm going to take my spring off. <laughs> Act of madness. got the lines tensioned up at the back I've just got to secure the um, storm line to the rear cleat. The front lines are looking okay. Um, we're a lot further back now from the pontoon I'm happier with that. Now the downside of using octoplat lines for our um, mirroring lines is that they are less hardy than the polyester braid on braid stuff so they do wear. However they don't wear that quick. These lines are now like four or five years old and the spring on there is beginning to look a bit weathered. We have a replacement for it. It's already in the locker. It's ready to go when we need it. But we find that for liveaboard stuff, these lines and the stretch in them make living aboard so much more pleasant. And there's no way that we would use the polyester lines for long-term mooring up if we're aboard. Coming in, they're great lines to throw the polyester ones. But in terms of stretch, they bring the boat to a sudden halt and they jerk everything on board. It's very unpleasant. But um, if you've got, apparently there are some stretch polyester lines. Never seen them, don't know where you get them, don't know how much they cost. But Octoplat, you can get it nearly anywhere and it stretches like a beauty. It's fantastic rope to use for mirrorings. Oops. Now 
Now, some of you may have noticed that um, our storm lines are not tight. They're hanging quite loosely on the boat. There is a reason for that, since the octoplot has a lot of stretch in it. If we put the um, storm lines on tight, the octoplot wouldn't be able to stretch, and we want the stretch to dampen out the motion of the boat in the gusts and winds. So we leave the polyester lines, or the polypropylene lines, whatever, I think they're polyester, we leave them a bit loose. Their only job is to stop the boat meandering around the marina, hitting other boats. If it bangs into the pontoon a bit, we're not too worried. We do have a bow fender on. Um, the boat won't wander off. If a line snaps, these storm lines will hold it in place until we get one of our spare octoplat lines on. And as I said, the spares are in the locker, so we're not too worried about that. Anyway, enough of all that. I've got a few boat chores to do, so I'm going to get on with that, and then we'll carry on from there. <laughs> Look what Beverly's been doing. While well, I've been away, Beverly has varnished the table. Doesn't it look absolutely beautiful? But um, this um, varnish is going to go off as soon as I start doing any little projects on top of it. So I've got to put down some kind of um, protection. Oh, Bevy, we've got some compass bearings. Come on, let's get it all lined up. Well, that actually raises a problem. Uh -huh. Which compass bearing? Are we going to align the tablecloth so that it sits north-south? Because at the minute we are, oh, about 15 degrees off and it needs to come... That way a bit. We're going to be right. We're going to be right. Let's see. North is... There. It's now aligned north-south. So are we going to have a circular tablecloth bed? Because when we move, we're going to be somewhere else with different directions. Well, I think we're going to be here for quite some time. So you just could have it this way. Then you'll always know where the wind's blowing while you're in harbour. I mean, I'm aware that once we leave here, north will change direction. But while we're in Bangor, you know, you could align this north-south. Then when the wind's kicking off a hoodie, you just look at the tablecloth and you think, yeah, well, you know, it's coming from the southwest. It would work. It would work. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I want it just like that for, you know, as a memento of banger, because I'm going to have it for longer than that. Well, look, it's a piece of cheap cloth we bought from Donna Mill. By the time we leave here, it'll probably be knackered and need replacing anyway. I suppose so. But the thing is, oh, look, I've got West East here and there's South and North. So which one would you be on anyway? They're all different. Well, that one, of course, you twit. <laughs> Half of them face north, okay? Half of them? No, a quarter, you dafty. Oh, yeah, because that one's east. That's east and south. What moron designed this thing? I think they were just not thinking about north and south, Bev. Worth I think... Worth it the sailors, that's for sure. <laughs> I think we'll have to line it up with the... Um, oh, the uh, with the boat. I think the microphone just went for a burn. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we'll just have to line it up with the boat. Straight. Can we do it all the way up? Yeah, if you want to, me say. Right, okay, that should be uh, reasonable. Oh gosh, look at that. Yeah, it's because I came in with my thumb. Okay. I've got a decent nail on that thumb. You've got a heavy thumb. I have got a heavy thumb. I haven't got it quite at the corner. We're allowed to be a millimetre or two out, okay? Right, moment of truth? Yeah, my little section down here isn't 100% yet. Okay, yeah, I see you mean. It's got that little, little... Here, give me, your, give me your scissors. Well, there we are. Um, we decided we were just going to keep it lined with the boat. So, Salty Lass will always either be pointing north, south, east or west according to this tablecloth. Look at all the bits you've saved. I know. Don't know what projects I'm going to do with it, but you know me, I'll find a use. <laughs>